Hello there. Today's video is going to be a completely self-gratuitous video. I'm going to do a lot of swatching. This is going to be inspired by both um, Morgan Turner and Hannah Louise Poston. This is going to be a video swatching some of my most extraordinary eyeshadow products and also just kind of talking about my favorite things in terms of eyeshadow products, things that I've realized in terms of trends. I'm setting up a second camera here, so I'm so sorry if you can see this guy in frame, but hopefully we're gonna have enough footage that I can kind of cut together different stuff so you can see things from different angles. I've just finished recording a look, so if you like what you see here, this is the Makeup by Joanna Gaines tutorial, and I'm gonna have it linked up in the cards. Hopefully it'll be up by now, but basically the look is all about smoky eyes, nude lips, and an orange cheek. So I feel like it's so iconic. It's one of my favorite looks from my childhood. I feel like it was one of the first times I realized makeup has such an impact on how people perceive you, and it can be so fun and glamorous, even if the makeup look is the same every single day for like a decade. So. <laughs> um, that is what this look is. Let's hop into the eyeshadow part of today's video. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I have not tidied up at all from my last video, so you're gonna hear me kind of shuffling some things around, but I feel like I haven't really gotten a chance to ramble on and on a little bit about some things that I've been feeling about my YouTube channel. I'm sure you guys have noticed that I have been trying to grow, so I've been posting pretty aggressively for the last week. I kind of have posted videos, I think, at least every single day, and I have stuff in the backlogs. I have a list of things that I wanna try before the end of the year, and it's just been um, a lot of me trying to play catch up with everyone else on YouTube, trying to build a library so that way when people come back to my channel they can reference the entire library of stuff that I've made and see what kind of floats their boat and I've always wanted to do this but I felt like it was so much work and at the time I wasn't really up for putting more stuff on my plate even now I don't know if I'm up for it but I'm doing it anyway so that's beyond the point um, but let's see if we can get this started Okay, so we're gonna do a couple like mini reviews and I'm gonna show you some of my most extraordinary eyeshadows. Um, this is my Norvina palette. I recently got it. I think I got it in like February or when it came out. And the shades in this, first of all, let me just show you how beat up this is. I don't use this daily. It's not a daily palette. It's not a ride or die work palette. But at the same time, I find this palette so easy to use. And that must just be me because I've heard a lot of people on the internet kind of dragging this product, saying that it's not interesting, saying that the color story is not great or that the formula is not fun. But I feel like everything in this shade, everything in this palette is fun. I don't know how to put it, like besides the fact that maybe I'm very boring and I like really boring shadows, but there are some really beautiful metallic neutral shades. Let me see if I can get a second cam going. Okay, talking about favorites here. Um, in this palette, some of my favorites include this shade, A5. I feel like it's such a unique copper shade, but it's kind of like a soft cream copper. A2 and A1 are those beautiful topper shades. A1 is more green, A2 is more lilac. And you can see those shifts, I think they're so gorgeous. E2 is an extraordinary glitter shade. And I use this on top of everything. I find that it looks so flattering on almost everything. C1 is a gorgeous highlight. Oh my God, I just took out a huge wad of that product. Yeah, I have to say the formula is a little bit finicky if you're someone who likes to dig in and use her fingers, but of course, it doesn't matter. Makeup is meant to be used, not hoarded. So let's take a look at this one. This one is a juicy, juicy swatch. It's so pretty. And then I think D3 and D4 are seriously slept on. These are kind of like topper shades. They're not as buttery, creamy smooth as the other ones, but pigmentation is still really, really nice. And um, oh, one of my favorites is actually A4. I know this is kind of like really, really boring, but I find this extraordinary because of the undertone. This is actually super wearable because it's got a little bit of pink in it. It's kind of like a, a pinky brown. And I just think that these shades have been really, really gorgeous and they've treated me really well. All right, I'm doing my Natasha Denona Gold Palette next. This was a gift from my fiance last year. I think I got it in July of last year and this is what she looks like right now. I've rearranged the palette obviously, so I don't think I will be able to properly describe um, which shades I'm talking about, but you can kind of see which colors I've dug into the most. I've kind of made a row of them down here. The first one being this clear base with nothing but gold glitter and that's all this shade is. It's just clear with gold and it's super reflective. I use it as a face highlight, I use it as an eye highlight. I think this one is lime chrome. No, this one's not lime chrome. This one is something else, but I find this one really extraordinary, and I find, I think this shade is called Kava, 
this one is also just one of the best shades for all over the eyes and i feel like the texture of these shades is kind of hard to work with lime chrome over here oh my gosh this on the eyes is such a showstopper absolutely gorgeous and even this um metallic brown here it's kind of like an unsung hero. It's kind of like the perfect mid-tone brown. And I feel like those are my standout shades in this palette. I know Oro is kind of a big one. I know it kind of looks like a standout shade. And it is absolutely objectively a standout shade. But I don't personally love those kinds of colors. So for me, she is not like a an Oriel standout shade. She is a general standout shade. All right, let's move on to my... Midas Flower Bomb palette. This one is new to me, but I've already developed some quick favorites. Namely, um, I really, really love the shade Blossom here. You can probably tell it's a peachy coral. And I think the way that the Michaels reflect on this are so, like, I don't know. They're so extra. It feels like a really wet shadow. Um, it must be kind of like that silver reflect that throws off so much light. And that one is definitely my favorite. But if I had to pick a second favorite, it would be Clover. Just because Clover is such a bright fun color it reminds me of spring Ugh, i don't have any other shades i think i have one shade like this and then i bought that one recently as well but prior to this palette i didn't have anything like this we're going to skip over my looksy single shadows because those are very very extraordinary i have two of the natasha denona um rose palettes so i'm not going to go over this one because this one is brand new she's in mint condition so we're going to open up this one and we're going to see just how beat up this is. You can really tell that I love this guy. Um, and you can kind of tell that my favorites are definitely the special shades here. So I'm going to swatch my three extraordinary shades in this palette. It's going to be that bottom corner, the top right, and the bottom right. So those are the three special shades on the end there. That really strong duochrome peach, that middle shade, and that just metallic, metallic just clear base with sparkle. I love, I love, I love. But at the same time, I don't want to underplay these three shimmers here. They are goat for me. They're so good. They are pretty much everything that I put on my eyes when I go to work. This highlight shade, gorgeous for the brow bone. This is gorgeous for the lash line. This has just been such a wonderful daily work palette. Um, and definitely on the cooler side. So if you are interested in dabbling in cooler tones, this would be a good one. We've got the Midnight Sun. This one has a lot of gorgeous shades, but my eyes are directly drawn to this bronze. Oh, juicy. What a juicy bronze. I mean, look at the texture in this guy. It's so soft. And then this lilac. And I have not owned a purple like that before. Absolutely gorgeous. Stunning. So stunning. I love gorgeous. Um, and then we've got Divine Rose 2. Big sister, cute, right? And this one kind of is like a palette of pops and you can see just how metallic those pans are. Those pans are pressed so beautifully. But for me, of course, that trichrome is to die for. Look at that. Oh, you can't really see the green. Um, can you see it in the pan? Yeah, right? It's better in the pan. Purple, uh, green, gold. That's the trichrome. Gorgeous, it's gorgeous. And I also think this color is completely a new game changer. So you compare this peach shade to this one from the other two palettes, the Midnight Scent and the Divine Rose one. This one's a little bit more peachy. This one is a little bit more clear, um, just absolutely stunning. I also think the standout shade might include this hot pink. This hot pink is really, really gorgeous. It's the pressed pigment. I think there might be a couple of pressed pigments, but this one is really gorgeous. And just having the one pink makes it a little bit more wearable, at least in my eyes it is. I'm so sorry, but we've uh, we've kind of made it to having a stained arm. So I'm going to try to move on to this arm. And you can see a little bit of staining from last night. But hopefully it's not too distracting when I talk about my favorite Luxy shades. Oh, these are just magnificent. So juicy and beautiful. So I'm just going to highlight some of them. I'm not going to go through every single one because we would be here forever. The first shadow is Doll Face. Now this one is a pink and gold. And the thing about Luxy shadows, which I learned about Indie, is that they kind of have an interesting softly pressed texture. I think that's kind of how they can get it so dimensional and so rich. Oh, does that not just look rich to you? <sighs> it just screams um, absolute shine and gorgeousness. The next one I wanna talk about is Starboy, which is a gold and icy blue. This is by far one of my most special shades. It's just so interesting. Um, I know it doesn't look that special because I am 
swatching it, but it feels really special to me. It's a really, really light baby blue with that gold undertone. Super unique. It's not something that you see all the time. Um, I think the next one that's really interesting to me is going to be this next one. Really similar, but the gold is just a little bit different, and the periwinkle is slightly different. So it really depends on the shades that you're looking for, but this one is called Nebula. And then I've got another one from the same brand, and this is a greeny shade. This is called Aquarius. This is Aquarius from Luxie. And then this is ColourPop, actually. And this last one is a duochrome from ColourPop called Tea Garden, and it's that beautiful, like, bronzy shade, but with a lot of an olive undertone. Really, really strong olive shade. I don't know if you can see that, but here in the bottom, it really kind of does read as a green, but on the eyes, it also looks a little bit brown. Super cool. All right, we are going to have to put all of these palettes back aside. Then we can move on to this bin of palettes. This is the In a Trance. This is from ColourPop. I bought two of the new palettes, and you can see that I've already dug into some of my favorites. So I would say one of my favorites is going to be this one called Clarity. It's got a really strange texture. You can see as I'm swatching it, giant pieces of product are just like falling off of my fingers, and it definitely doesn't feel like the other ones, but at the same time, it doesn't really feel like a super shock shadow. So I don't know what they've done with the formula of this one, but let's just take a hunk and let me show you why I find this one so astounding. It reminds me of like the world's smoothest duochrome highlight. It's sheer, but it's got such a strong blue purple flip. I just find it so unique, so gorgeous. And it's one of those beautiful topper shades that you can apply as a highlight or you can kind of sweep it over the whole look to give it a really nice um, wash of color. My next favorite color is probably going to be this powder blue one called Future Self. Now it's really kind of white and powdery and for that reason I really like it in the inner corner as a pop. I feel like it really does serve itself well kind of as a focal point. And then just the rest of this palette I do think is really gorgeous. I would say my next favorites would be this one, Transcend Dance and Daydream Baby. So these two are super unique as well. And I'll just do quick swatches of those. Just really, really cute. Um, cute colors, really cute color scheme. All right, and then we've got the Bliss, oops, the <laughs> Miss Bliss palette. This one is the companion palette to the first one, but with warmer tones. This one, honestly, I feel more lukewarm about just because these are shades very much so in my wheelhouse and they don't really shine a, a, a candle next to, is that the expression? Shine a candle? Light a candle? Shine a light? I don't really know idioms that well, which kind of makes me a bad English teacher, but um, there are other ways to learn the language, right? Okay, so it doesn't really hold a candle. That's the one. It doesn't really hold a candle to my peach palette. This is the one that is my ride or die, absolutely in my top five favorite palettes, just because I think the coloring of this works really, really well for me. And this one is just, it's like this one, but not as perfect. So if I had to pick extraordinary shades from this, I think it would have to be this Cheers to You color, which is that really pretty like golden pink shade that I always like. So that is Cheers to You. It's also got that really beautiful crushed mica texture. Really pretty, I have no complaints. But this one, oh my god, I have so many standout shades from this palette. How do I do this without blinding you? This one is one of my favorites. This is called Occur. I'm not gonna do the, the trill because I don't want to embarrass myself on the internet forever. But this is that shade. It's really beautiful. I use it on the lips, I use it on the eyes. It is kind of like a burnt orange, but I don't know, it's got something a little bit special about it. It reminds me of a persimmon color. So that is that. I love it so much. And then, of course, my next favorite would be this one, which is called Centerfold, and this one called Glaze It. They're absolutely gorgeous. Super juicy. Oh my god, I love these so much. Centerfold, Glaze It. Absolutely gorgeous for everyday eye makeup. These are pretty extraordinary, I'd say. Um, out of my Biddy palette, I don't know that I would say I have anything more extraordinary than this color. This is called Pop, and this is if a 
I don't know if a glitter bomb just vomited all over your face. I think this is what I imagined the Rowan quads to be like, but like way better. <sighs> do you see how much texture is in this? I really need to do a close up. Do you see the magic that is this color? Because I don't think you do. Oh, this, I need this like in a single, you know those disco eyes that Rowan puts out where they just have it in like the compact and it's like a full size. I need that for this. I really, really do. You can see that this well is like really, really gouged out. I think this might be the first eyeshadow that I completely pan. And then I think Gimme a Bear or Gummy a Bear, sorry. This one is also a really, really unique shade. I use this all over the face as a highlight pretty frequently. And you can see just how interesting that flip is. It's pink. It's definitely pink. And it's almost a lilac pink. It doesn't really feel like a traditional pink to me, but it has a really strong, um, interesting silver gold shift. It's not a yellow gold shift. I... I die, could you die? It's so cool, it's such an interesting color. Oh my gosh, I'm getting carried away. Uh, we have to put her away. Um, strawberry Shake, I think if I had to do this, I would really say I don't have any extraordinary colors in this palette. I feel like this is a really awesome palette. I use it all the time. I love this peach shade, I love these mattes, and I actually really, really like the shade Whipped. Delish is beautiful all over the face, but in terms of the whole thing, there's nothing that I feel like I, I covet so strongly in this palette that I would call it one of my most extraordinary shades. Natasha did a bronze, baby. There's so many in here that I really, really gravitate towards, but I'm just going to name a couple because I don't feel like we can be here for that long. Um, so surprisingly enough, um, Deep Dive is one of my favorites. It's just so interesting. It's such an extraordinary color. It's a really, really deep, dark brown. Oh, we'll do the swatches later. Rhodium for sure. Bliss, which I made a whole video around, and then Silk are kind of like the favorites. And then we'll go for Gloaming, because I think Gloaming is also pretty nice. So Gloaming, which is that red bronze, truly like a red bronze. Oh, do you see why I love that? Did you see that swatch? It was so creamy and buttery, and it's got a little bit of that chocolate brown undertone. Rhodia, which is like a, a baby cousin version of that one, but a little bit more glimmery. We've got Bliss. And then that bronze shade, I think it's called Silk. This is extraordinary, my friends. If I had to make a five pan shadow, like um, mini palette from this, like if I had to make a mini bronze, it would be this or something very close to this. I feel like all the different undertones of bronze are here. Red, pink, yellow, purple, and then like a really rusty, rusty dark chocolate brown. Absolutely gorgeous. I live, I die, it's beautiful. Ooh, we forgot a little Pat McGrath girl. Of course, the most extraordinary one would be this pink one, which I have already hit pan on. I've really used the living daylights out of it. It's basically just a sparkly pink and gold duochrome, but it is small but mighty, one of my favorites. All right, friends, I am back. I had to use makeup remover to get rid of the swatches on my arms because we're not done yet. Um, this is one of my oldest palettes, the NARS Ignite palette. Um, you can also see I picked pan on. I can just show you just like looking at the pan, which ones do you think are most extraordinary? The ones that like catch the light, right? So I'm actually gonna talk, I'm gonna wax very poetic about some of these shades here because I feel like NARS is severely slept on and they have such interesting dimension in their colors. So I'm gonna take my finger, I'm just gonna swipe and we are gonna look at the magic that has just happened here. Do you see how interesting these shades are? I don't know that we can really get a full assessment of what's going on here, but they are so wet, so glossy. The fine micro glitter that runs through these shades, this one I can distinctly see blue, purple, yellow, orange, and pink. This one is just a fiery um, orangey color, which I just think is universally loved. And this one clearly has like these really strong golden little specks and purple just really really stunning i feel like nars is so slept on their formulas are so elegant um we've got a tiny natasha mini nude i feel like my favorite from this one has to be this shade this third one here it's called sienna again with that really rich gorgeous textured brown mm. oh i'm getting like hot and bothered this is like so fun for me and then my new Venus 3. I feel like she has been so unexpected. I feel like the colors in this truly are quite extraordinary. There are a bunch of extraordinary colors in this one. We're gonna start with Dreamy, which is this matte here. This one is just so interesting. It's like really purple. It doesn't really look that purple um, when you look at it in the pan, but on the eyes, look at her. She's super purple. I've also used her on the lips as an interesting lip color, and I feel like that was really cool. All right, we've got the next two shades, Beam and Heavenly. These are kind of like difficult formulas to work with. They get a little bit of hard pan. 
and I kind of have to like really scrub in there but once you do get that color out ooh, it's flaky it's gorgeous the shades are super dimensional I love Rapture this is a really beautiful kind of yogurt color but it has that lilac in it I just think whoever did the design for this had such a good eye because this color seems on the surface like the most boring yogurt color in the world but then you apply it on the eyes and it has such a beautiful shift of course beloved bliss um uh, paradise and ecstasy i'm just gonna swatch this whole palette because this palette is everything to me it's so good i feel like the shades are so harmonious this is everything that the urban decay electric palette wanted to be but couldn't be because this already did it this is what i wanted i wanted nude shades like these are very nude and yet at the same time we're gonna cover her face because she's distracting um these are very nude shades and yet at the same time they have that purple flip right like this color could easily be worn every day these two colors are really kind of light and airy this yogurt color the transition shades and then you do have some of your pops here right but they are just absolutely dimensional stunning this is what i wanted urban decay to come out with i feel like this is what everyone wanted urban decay to make but you know in their formula and they couldn't they couldn't do it all right in this palette um i took out two to put in my little single shade thing but this was actually actually i can show you what the palette originally looked like because i remember it mm, this guy was in there and this guy okay. so this was a dupe of the michelle I think it was called Heavenly Heaven's Hue or Heavenly Glow. This was based, oh, her Magic Hour um, six pan eyeshadow palette. Now this is my quote unquote duping the vibes. And this is something that Hannah does on her channel where she thinks about the feelings that are evocative from the palette. And she tries to recreate what those feelings felt like for her if she were to build a palette. Because sometimes when we build a palette, it's not about the actual eyeshadows themselves, but how the eyeshadows make us feel or what we perceive from the eyeshadows. And so I looked at um, Magic Hour from Michelle Phan and I felt a lot of texture, dimension, warmth, subtlety, just gorgeous shimmeriness. And so I picked out colors that I thought would suit that. And out of the colors I picked from ColourPop, a lot of them are real hits. This first one is an absolute banger. Um, I'm gonna hit pan on that one soon. This is called Painted Lady, and I imagine this is gonna be an eyeshadow that I completely pan because I love it. It's so glimmery, it's gorgeous, like piled on thick as a highlight. Oh, you're really not seeing the full effect here. She is absolutely beautiful. This next shade here, it's called Come and Get It. This is kind of, um, it reminds me of a shade that I had as a childhood from Laura Mercier. I had in my childhood from Laura Mercier called African Orchid, and it was a lilac with a really strong golden flip, and I haven't been able to find too many shades like that afterwards, but this one truly reminds me of that shade from Laura Mercier, and I've been using it ever since because I feel like purple and gold is such a beautiful combination, and people often combine the colors like in a look together, but not often do I see the colors like physically together. Then we did Tea Garden already. Glass Bowl, of course, is a classic. This one, I feel like everyone has seen. It's gorgeous. It's duochrome. Um, but the last one that I personally really love is called Turn Tables. Now, this one is a really strong peachy pink. No one is surprised that I like that. It reminds me of Pop from that Biddy collection. Pop was a little bit more pink, a little bit less coral, and the flakes, the actual texture from Pop, because it's a super shock shadow, it's much more pressed and glimmery. It's got a lot of like physical texture, whereas this one is much smoother, it's pressed, so there's really not many surprises in this one, but nonetheless, one of my favorite person, oh, this one too. This is a MAC that has some golden sheen in it, and it kind of makes the color seem so soft and wearable. It's super gorgeous what is this one called this one is called pretty pretty cruel sorry it was really hard for me to read that upside down pretty cruel by color pop so highly recommend doing curated color pop single like inspired eyeshadows i think it's super fun um this one was inspired by the venus 2 or venus 3 one of the lime crime palettes and i figured i would throw something together i plucked out a couple shades to use elsewhere but honestly i would say none of these are really extraordinary shadows maybe because i don't love the mattes and the shimmers are kind of just meh out of this one i would also say none of them are too 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 extraordinary except for maybe this one i think it's called baseline yeah baseline is she's a good one she is quite extraordinary she's just a shimmery baby blue but i don't really have a lot of shimmery baby blues and i think this one has such a cute color 
um, it truly is just like an adorable baby, baby blue. All right, guys, I feel like I've walked you through all of my most extraordinary eyeshadows. I don't feel like I have anything else to share with you, but this is all of it. This is my pile of treasure, and we'll do a quick outro before I say goodbye to you. This one was too mad that I spent this whole time basically just showing you my fat arms and all of the eyeshadows that I swatched on, on them in a very uncontrolled, very unprofessional manner. But seeing that, I don't have that many subscribers right now, and my channel is all about loving what I have, showing you guys my just unbridled love for makeup. I don't really mind doing this um, because this was one of the most enjoyable videos I saw on Hannah's channel, and also Morgan Turner does like the sip and swatch of the indie shadows and I just think it's a really fun chill low value way to enjoy the beauty that is makeup and um, Hannah talked about how it gives her hope that in her own collection she has so many jewels so many things that she's picked out that are perfect for her and the way I see it is of course these are perfect I've picked out the most perfect of the most perfect bunch right if I were to curate a single shadow or if I were to curate a palette, I feel like it would definitely look like what I've shown you today. Lots of texture, dimension, duochromes, everything would be light and peach and pastel and gorgeous except for the dark colors which would have a lot of shimmer and texture and everything would just be all that I love in makeup which um, it's interesting that we have such strong taste because I was re-watching that video last night and a lot of people were saying that some of her favorite shades, especially some of the like really dimensional Cleona ones, um, those ones were too much for some of those folks that um, ended up buying them and they gave them to friends, they gave them away because makeup is so personal and it's so interesting to see um, someone swatch their collection, look at it and be like, oh interesting, that's not what I would have picked as an extraordinary color. I'm sure if Hannah came and looked at my collection, she would have been basically in the opposite direction, looking at some of those really sooty shades, um, some of those more nuanced, uh, grungy colors, because I know that's kind of up her alley, and for me, I'm kind of the exact opposite. I don't love grungy colors. I kind of like really bright, fun, airy, um, fairy, glimmery, uh, pastel stuff. So we're kind of in completely opposite ball camps there. Is that what they're called? Ball. We are in completely different. What is expression called? Gosh, I totally forgot what it was called. But we are in two completely playing grounds there because she likes really grungy shades and I like really pastel shades and you might like really neutral shades and I don't think I really picked browns as some of my most extraordinary colors. So super interested to see what you guys think are some of your extraordinary colors and let me get on Temptalia's blog and kind of look them all up because honestly, I could look at swatches all day long. I know sometimes people see playing around with makeup like this as wasteful, but if you have a collection that looks anything like mine or more, your collection is wasteful. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I'm with an environmental engineer, so we are very much so trying to live like a more conscientious lifestyle of, you know, no disposables and no stuff like that. But at the same time, we do have to keep in mind that we're human. We have our own pleasures. There are things in life that keep us going. And for me, makeup is one of the things that keeps me going. And playing with this makeup um, is a way for me to use it, right? Because there's no way I can get all this eyeshadow on my tiny little Asian eyes before they go bad. I mean, these things all have a quote unquote shelf life of like two years. Of course, people can keep them longer than that and they're totally fine as long as the formula doesn't go off. But I do think there is something to be said about the pleasure of playing with makeup, the pleasure of making up concepts, the pleasure of just kind of touching and feeling everything that you, you like and even assessing how you feel about stuff. I'm gonna do a couple videos like this showing you, you know, product showcases and just kind of playing with my whole collection so everyone knows what I'm starting with and um, hopefully my collection doesn't grow from here. But I also do wanna do some ranking videos and this might be different from the content that I've already posted on my channel, so hopefully if you are new, it doesn't deter you too much but I also hope that it inspires you to go through your collection, think about what you already have, sorry my voice cracked, think about what you already have and how you can re-fall in love with the things that you've purchased. I think if your collection is largely items that have been given to you or items that you picked up because you bought them when they were on a good sale, um, when you play with that stuff and you realize that you don't really love everything you have, it might be eye-opening. Or maybe you think that you don't love what you have and then you play with it and you realize you do love it. So super, super eye-opening experience. I encourage every one of you guys to touch and feel all the stuff that you have been playing with. 
take note of the items that you've panned if you've panned any I've hit pan on a couple of items and I'm actually pretty stoked that I can look at my arm and say like hey that's like pretty indicative of what I like actually um, so it's been really fun I wish I took more pictures of all of the swatches up my, my chubby little arms but I forgot to do that for the thumbnail so I guess it'll just be my cute face and all the eyeshadows floating around but this was a little bit of a more chill video I'm trying to not put so much pressure on myself to create highly highly um, produced edited and like artistic videos because it can be a lot of pressure on my little heart um, so thank you so much for being here with me it's really meant a lot to me really seeing all of you guys in the comment sections and um, on my Instagram it's just so fun because I never really thought I could do this and um, it's really just coming out of a place of pure passion thank you again for being here and I will see you guys very soon bye